Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for taking some time on this beautiful day to come up here. Um, in just a moment, we are going to sign the legislation um, to make recreational and adult use cannabis available in Minnesota. We will uh, become, I believe, the 23rd state. The 11th other states have uh, homegrown cannabis. But this has been a long journey with a lot of folks involved. Um, what we know right now is prohibition does not work. We've criminalized a lot of folks who are going to start the expungement process on those records. Um, we have a situation where um, buying cannabis on the streets is dangerous with the things from fentanyl to xylazine to the other things we're starting to see show up. It makes sense to have that. We also know we have a lot of folks here, and uh, you're going to get to hear from some of those who have been at this for a long time. And they've made the case around medicinal cannabis, around pain relief, around the ability to uh, uh, to treat many things that they know makes a difference, plus the fact of being adults need to make their own decisions around these types of, uh, of choices. There's a lot of folks in here, and I'm going to miss some, but I want to thank certainly our authors on this, Senator Port, Representative Stevenson, thank you. This is not only getting this bill legalized, it was an exercise in democracy. Um, I think we had 30 plus hearings. We had many witnesses in here. We had a lot of the work that was being done around that um, and ushered that through countless committees to get it to this point. Um, on the administration side, we've been working on this since 2019. I ran on this in, in 2018. Um, when we uh, were elected, we started by going to Vermont, having folks from Vermont and Colorado come here. And a lot of the work that was done on the agencies in state government coordinating together and standing up the office um, was done from 2019 to this moment. So um, it's going to take us a bit of time to get this up and going. We'll be getting some people into the positions to be able to run this. But I assure Minnesotans that a lot of thought has gone into this. A lot of the things learned in other states are incorporated into how we do this. And the thoughtfulness around this legislation gives us a really good guiding principle. A few of the groups that are here, Minnesota's Ready, I want to thank them. The folks at Minnesota Normal, I think the first time I talked to you was several decades ago when we were talking about <laughs> to the folks. How many state fairs were we at across the street from the state fair and um, had conversations? When I was running for Congress in 2005, it's a group of folks who work with me because I was advocating for this. I took that work to Congress because um, of, of cannabis being listed as a Schedule One. It causes all kinds of problems in the, in the Veterans Administration um, on how do we treat uh, veteran issues, especially chronic pain, where we know that in the current conflicts we, we started overprescribing opioids. And um, what we saw was is, is we passed the first piece of legislation that ever passed the United States Congress stepping marijuana back down again to make sure that we could do the research in the VA to be able to get, um, to get some of the breakthroughs we know we need to get. Uh, folks in the, the Olivers here, I think, grassroots legalized cannabis party, to the folks who had the parties who ran. Um, an incredible service, both to moving this piece of legislation forward, but to the democracy. Folks who got organized enough, and we know there's some bad actors that played into this. It wasn't these people. It wasn't this party. These were folks who used the democracy and organized and got people out there and got on the ballot and pushed this issue. Um, they were part of us getting to this point today. So I want to say a big thank you to the folks who made that happen. And then, of course, I would be remiss. I am not the first governor to talk about this. I'm the second governor to talk about this. Um, and uh, I was about 20 years after the fact on that. Governor Ventura and First Lady Ventura um, advocated for this 25 years ago. And they also, and I want to say thank you for for sharing and thank you for trusting the public with your stories, uh, very candidly came forward and talked about how it impacted their lives, how it made their lives better. These are very personal decisions. These are things that adults would not and from now on do not have to talk about, but somebody had to do it. Somebody who had the ability to be able to talk about it, to get people to listen, um, and uh, the Venturas did that. And so it is appropriate that I think at that time, Governor, if I'm not wrong, we would have become the second or the third state instead of the 23rd had we listened to you at that time. I think we were on the front end. Um, but. But well, the bronze medals. The so. bronze medals. So we're here. But uh, it's a good day. And I, I assure people as they're listening out there, uh, prohibition has not worked. 
we need to put things in place that are safe. And for those who make the comments, we're certainly not advocating for our children. We're trying to make sure that there is a uh, regulatory regime put in place. There are processes put in place. There's the ability for adults to make those decisions without criminalizing them. We know what the products are that are out there. And it just makes for a smoother market. Turning your back and pretending a problem doesn't exist. And for those who bring up what about this, what about that, all of those things are happening right now. What this is meant to do is to try and reduce those facts, to reduce those chances and to make um, to make cannabis and adult use cannabis uh, safe and uh, legal in Minnesota. So I'm proud of the work that was done here. Uh, this seems like a long journey and I, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up the fact that this is. We've got folks here from our tribal leaders who are here um, to others who are going to see the opportunity for another agricultural product um, to create wealth. We've got uh, uh, United Food and Commercial Workers here who are going to work on this. They're going to need people to grow this. You're going to need people to process. You're going to need people to transport. Um, all of those things are going to create economic opportunities. And I'm just really grateful folks are, are seizing the Minnesota entrepreneurial spirit. They're going to get themselves in a position to do this, and we can continue to make progress on it. Um, with that, I think I'm going to turn to our lead author in the Senate, Senator Port. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Senator Lindsay Port from District 55. I am delighted to be here with you uh, as we sort of put the period at the end of the sentence on this piece of legislation. Um, this has been, you know, a huge, huge lift uh, this session. And uh, through the process, there are two things that I have said consistently. One, prohibition does not work. Uh, the governor laid out all of the reasons why. If we could have solved any of the concerns people had with cannabis through prohibition, we would have done it any time over the last 50 years. It doesn't work. Um, I'm really proud that Minnesota is taking a step forward and trying something new. And we're trying it in a way that is unique to Minnesota, that really delves into the realities of Minnesota, that looks at entrepreneurial spirit, that looks at reinvesting in communities that have been harmed, and most importantly, that puts front and center in this legislation the expungement piece to make sure that we are undoing some of the harm that we have done as a state through the prohibition of cannabis. The other thing I've been saying through this is that it has been a joint effort. And yes, because I love a good pun, but also because this is, this really is a community focused bill. And it has gotten here today, not because of Representative Stevenson and I, or even because the governor pushed this. It has gotten here today because of the people of Minnesota. Because you all stood up and said, this is what we want. We are ready for this. You organized through patients who needed medicinal marijuana. You organized through veterans, through farmers, through hemp growers, through retailers. It is a full group effort. And I think that this bill really reflects that. And we will see uh, profit not just in a, a sort of a fiscal way, but we will see growth and profit in our communities in a way that allows our communities to build wealth, especially those who have been most harmed by prohibition. Um, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for covering this bill, for you know, understanding the huge step that we are taking and what this will mean, particularly to communities who have been most harmed. Thank you so much. I am delighted to watch this get signed today. Good afternoon. I'm Zach Stevenson. I was the House author of this legislation. Thank you, Governor, uh, for your support in signing the bill uh, today. And while Minnesota might be the 23rd state to legalize cannabis, I think we've passed the best bill in the country that Minnesotans can be uh, really proud of. Uh, we've learned from what happens in other states. We've built a model that will work for Minnesota specifically, and I think Minnesotans will be really pleased uh, with the results of that work. And I, I want to echo the comments that Senator Port and the governor both made about how really, uh, you know, this has been a long, long race to get to this point, and, and we are just the anchor team of that race, carrying the baton across 
uh, the finish line. And there have been so many people in this building and outside this building who made sure that we uh, got uh, to this point, a few of whom I, I just want to specifically recognize, including uh, former Majority Leader Ryan Winkler, who's here today, who worked tirelessly to bring the bill forward and really elevated. Thank you, Leader Winkler. Uh, also, uh, the intellectual uh, godmother of the bill, uh, uh, Chair Aisha Gomez, who's a uh, banker who uh, is uh, big in, in writing it. But there's a risk in naming specific names of people you're thanking, because inevitably you forget uh, a lot of people who are really important. Uh, and so I'm going to stop there, but just say that countless legislators uh, have touched this. But actually, I'm going to name one more, which is Representative Jess Hansen, who has worked so hard uh, yeah. on this, both inside the legislature and outside uh, to make it happen. But we could continue uh, with this strain uh, all afternoon, naming people who worked hard inside this building and outside this building in ways big and small uh, to get us to this, uh, to this point. Uh, I was asked this morning uh, by a, a reporter, uh, why did you take on this issue? And, and the answer is, it was the issue that I was hearing about from my constituents more than anything else when I was out door knocking. People would say, it's time, let's do this. Our current laws are doing more harm than good. And in a few moments, the governor's going to start to undo uh, that harm. And I'm, I'm looking forward to watching you uh, sign that. So uh, now I have the great uh, pleasure and honor of introducing the, the former governor of Minnesota. I was a freshman in high school when he shocked the world. I remember listening to it on the radio. And so it's my great pleasure to introduce Governor Jesse Ventura. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of myself and uh, First Lady Terry Ventura, um, this is a huge day in our family's life because uh, prohibition will now end. It's gone on longer than I've been alive. The pro prohibition of a plant made by God. Well, now it we were always told everything was here for us to use. Now in Minnesota, we will be able to use this plant. After years of prohibition, we didn't want any families to go through what the First Lady and I went through. We don't want anyone to have to ever do that in Minnesota. Now, today, they will never have to because prohibition will end today on cannabis. And I guess I'll finish by saying, for me personally, it's very wonderful to see a dream of yours over 20 years ago finally happen today, and I'm still alive to see it. <laughs> Governor Waltz, thank you. The legislature, thank you. You're the ones that did it. You got it done, and you deserve a pat on the back for that. And what press conference would there be if Jesse Ventura didn't leave with something said controversial, right? <laughs> right? So I'll end it by saying this. Jimi Hendrix is looking down on Minnesota smiling <laughs> today. Well said. At this time, Governor Ventura would be glad to answer some questions. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, hey, fire away. Um.
Senator Ventura, what did change in the 25 years since you ran for governor and you were talking about this at the state fair when you were out there yourself? What, what changed? Um, I think it probably was simply a case of education, of people becoming educated more and not listening to and watching performances like Reefer Madness on TV and things of that nature, the propaganda that went on about cannabis all these years and everything about it. I think it's basically the people of Minnesota especially have been educated now and they understand that cannabis, all drugs and all forms of things have an upside and a downside to them, but cannabis' upside is so much, much more and good than any downside. And so for me personally, it was just something I've always believed that it was wrong for cannabis to be against the law. And I felt that it needed to be said 20 years ago or 25 years ago, the attempt needed to be made. And one thing you learn about our government, it doesn't move quickly. So for it to happen within 20 years is actually quite quick. In by the standards out there. From what you've seen of the bill, are you convinced there's enough that's going to be done to keep impaired drivers off the road? Impaired drivers are out there right now. It isn't going to make any difference one way or the other that way. Impaired driving, you've allowed alcohol all these years. We tried prohibiting that, and to my best knowledge, my dad told me about it. It wasn't very successful. Prohibition has never worked. Never in the past has it worked, and it's not going to work in the future. And so certainly you should not drive under the influence of anything. It's that simple. You don't drive under the influence of anything. Governor, where does this stand out in your legacy 20 plus years later? You have domestic partner benefits, light rail, nonpartisan judiciary. Where do you put this in your legacy? Oh, I don't put it there, you do. <laughs> Haven't you all missed that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, I don't look back at a legacy and say Jesse Ventura. I, 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 I was a spark that, that, that brought a thought to the table. And it took many years of diligent work by legislators, governors, Governor Waltz especially, to reach this point today. And it, nothing, in government you learn nothing happens overnight. You know, it really doesn't. Governor Walls, uh, what of this is gonna be the most difficult for your, your administration to, to convert on? To do to, to bring it up to reality. Yeah. What what aspects of this law are going to be? You think I thought you're going to ask me a question about acting or no. wrestling or something. <laughs> so I felt like we were trading positions here. Um, I do think that making sure that the licensing piece of this, and I think you've seen this. We've got folks here from the Department of Agriculture, folks here from the BCA who will be working on the expungement. Um, I'm feeling confident about it because we've had four years and we've had these other states to look at it. I think it's standing it up um, to make sure, and I feel really good about the regulatory regime. You've seen that even though in kind of a short fuse on the, the gummies and things, we've been able to catch the bad actors in that if they're trying to sell that aren't, shouldn't be out there. I, I think that's, uh, that's a piece that I feel confident about. I think it's getting folks licensed out there. I'm really just grateful. The thoughtfulness that went into the bill about making sure we've got good local partners in this, that, that is a really important piece of it. So I think we, we can do this. We, we've done it before on other things. We have a regime that's uh, even more complex around alcohol right now as it stands. Um, so we'll be able to do it. And I have to tell you, for some of you, if you to get the fuller story on this, we've got folks here from White Earth and uh, and Prairie Island and others, these folks have been looking at this for a lot of years too and are kind of on the front end of how to make this work. And I had the chance to tour up in uh, Manoman, an uh, incredible facility that's going to be on the front end of this. So I, I think we're going to, our partners will make this happen. But I think it reassure. Yeah. Been on for a long time. And, and I think the making sure that we're able to coordinate across state government, I, again, I tell people who might not think that this is a signing and now it happened, it's been years and years of work planning for this day inside state government. Did you talk about the expungement element of this and how important that is to the bill as a whole? Yeah, it's important, and this is where the black community has known this. So we know what the statistics show, that the, the chances of someone uh, 
being arrested or, or uh, being incarcerated around cannabis was much greater if you were a person of color, if you were in the black community. Um, we'll start on the misdemeanors, the, the, the petty misdemeanors will start early, but I think I heard Rep. Stevenson's talking this morning. Um, we've got 50 years of folks that we've been arresting and, and getting records on them. It's not going to unwind immediately, but we feel a sense of urgency around that. We'll start that process this summer and get moving on that and get folks' records cleared up. And I think this is where Minnesotans, you know, you know who you are out there. If you had one of these at one time or whatever, keep a track on this. We'll make sure we get those things expunged, get them out of the records. But I, I, I would argue for many folks up here, myself included, this was a really important piece of this. Um, we really made life tough for people. And I heard it in front of the pardon board countless times. Yeah. People who are 18, 19, 20 years old who had a conviction around cannabis who have lived exemplary lives and were simply trying to be licensed in, whether it be a nurse or a teacher, a police officer, they were trying to do these things and that was keeping them from being able to do that. So I feel really uh, positive about this piece, but many up here, that's what they were fighting for. Representative Stevenson, would you be able to talk a little bit more about where and when cannabis can be used as far as the terminology in the bill? Yeah, well, I think uh, the, the, most of the effective dates are August 1st, the summer that are relevant to people. So starting on August 1st, it will no longer be a crime in Minnesota to possess up to two ounces of cannabis outside your home or up to two pounds of cannabis uh, inside your home. And that's also when it becomes uh, legal to grow cannabis at your home, up to eight plants total, four of which uh, can be uh, mature. That's also when a lot of that expungement work really will kick into a high gear at, in the height of the summer. And then as the governor said, there's a lot of work to be done standing up uh, the marketplace, making sure that we have all of the regulations and rules to protect people's uh, health and safety and consumer uh, protections, all the benefits that a legitimate marketplace offers. That will probably take 12 to 18 months uh, beyond that before you see retail locations uh, open uh, uh, right away. But the change will be starting uh, sooner this summer. Or can you address this the seed issue? People can uh, grow plants at home, but it's technically illegal to bring the seeds over state lines. How do you reconcile that? Um, how does that how is that going to look? My understanding is seeds, since they have less than 0.3% THC, there's not a barrier uh, to legality uh, uh, there. So people should be able uh, to purchase uh, seeds. It's my understanding there are already places that sell seeds uh, around uh, the state, but that's that's legal. It's less than uh, the threshold under state law currently, and will obviously continue to be uh, legal. People able to buy seeds. What's the timeline for um, hiring somebody to lead the new cannabis office as, as you get the licensing up and running? Is that coming soon? Yes, it's, that'll be this summer. That's the work we do now. We get this thing standing up. We'll have the advisory committee that'll be there to help us on this. As for citizens, I would ask all the folks out there. We've had a few people show interest in this um, already. Um, for trying to stand up on that. And I would encourage folks, if they think that is something they want to be a part of, to, uh, to do that. We say that on all the committees and all the things. Now there will be one around this issue of adult use uh, cannabis. You have and picking that person. We haven't put it together yet. We'll put out the job description on this and get it out there. Folks will apply for this. Um, you know, there'll be a, a, a big skill set here of running an agency, working across the agency from the Department of Health, Department of Agriculture to BCA. Um, people who can manage those groups. Can I ask one of the sponsors a question about uh, edibles? You did uh, bring the edibles uh, industry into this bill. W what happens with them, say, tomorrow or the next day or this summer? Sure. Uh, there is a part of this bill that puts into place temporary regulations as we're setting up the agency before the agency is in charge of rulemaking and things like that. Um, so those regulations uh, go into effect in August uh, with everything else. and. Uh, it really is critical. Um, what we've seen with this industry so far is, as it was legalized last year, it's sort of been the Wild West. Uh, there has not been a lot of regulation around it, um, and so the requirements on the, that five uh, milligrams, no more than two servings in a beverage, um, and you know, testing requirements will be put into place so that those are much more regulated than they currently are. When can, you, when can you legally use it? I know it's happening now, but... I mean, the edibles, the low-dose edibles are still, are, are legal, continue to be legal, uh, but then August 1st. 
Governor Walls, will you take a stab at the legacy question? You've had a lot of historic bill signings this session in your second term. Where does this stand in context to your yeah, career? I'm kind of with Governor Ventura on this. I think legacy is written by others. I, 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 will, I will phrase it a little differently. <laughs> but, um, but I think that's right. I, I think it's important because I think listening to so many, if you're out there doing this, you heard this overwhelmingly. And I, I remember uh, I got asked, uh, Tom asked me at a debate in 2017 about it, and I had already been supportive of this. I think it's about following through, and I think the legacy that you create is if you're listening to constituents, you're doing the things that improve lives or have the opportunity to impact them positively, those things will get in there. I just like the idea with this legislature, and I saw a Senator Dietz that came in and uh, Speaker Hortman. I, I know as far as, for me personally on this, I, I will never speak about things we've done without mentioning their names together in this because it has been a partnership with an incredible legislature and I think it's important I think I, I said in January that the era of gridlock is over this didn't get done just because of gridlock this didn't get done and I never for the life of me could figure out with right-leaning libertarianism what the deal is with more government over you know trying to regulate what you can do as an adult so I think one of the things this probably plays into is breaking down that idea that gridlock is the way things are and that stuff can actually get done. That's what we promised you. We promised in November we'd get stuff done, and a lot got done. Any prospects uh, to get your foot involved in the legal market? Well, uh, I'm sorry to repeat that. Any prospects to get your foot involved in the legal cannabis market? Any prospects of me? Well, getting involved as far as like brand-wise, you don't have any interest in like- Oh, I don't know. That, that's, down, that's down the road. But yeah. I would like to make a statement for all of you that's on another subject. I just returned from Mexico. I went down there 30 days ago and re returned now. It took me three seconds to drive into Mexico. It took me three hours to drive into my country. And I burned 70 miles worth of gasoline waiting to do it. Think about that at the border for a minute. Governor Ventura, yes. uh, Governor Ventura on, a, on another topic, I know you love this law. Your thoughts about license tabs going up? <laughs> Well, <laughs> my, my thought about license tabs is the same as it's always been. I can't figure out why they need a seven-year sales tax on your car licenses. It should be a flat rate. You're buying a license to drive on the roads. It should have no bearing on the price of whatever you're driving. So you got my political position there. They made sure to change that within a year after I left, so it doesn't fall on these people. It falls on people about 16 years ago. One more I'm not time. forgetting that, Tom. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is your life. Did you no. Authors, can you address one of the concerns that was consistently raised during the debate about the gap between when you can legally grow and use marijuana and the regulated products that are on the market, the people with concerns say you're just, allow you're just allowing the black market to thrive when you're trying to move it to a regulated space. The process of eliminating the illicit marketplace and moving to a legitimate marketplace is going to take, obviously, a lot of time. And it, that, that's what was our experience the last time we moved from an illicit market to a legitimate market with alcohol, and it will be true with cannabis, too. And we see that in other states, but there has been success in getting rid of the illicit marketplace in other states. States like Washington and Montana have shrunk their illicit market dramatically over the time that they've had uh, legalization. Uh, we are able uh, to make something uh, not criminal that is criminal today and end the harm that we've been talking about all along, and that's very important. But to do the job right of setting up a legitimate marketplace is going to take some time. We're going to try and make that as short a time as we possibly can, but we need to do it responsibly and do it well, and that it takes some time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thanks, everybody. Thank you. Well done.